Professor. We are recording, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you also for organizing this webinar and inviting us all here. Today, uh, I will try to present the recent findings and information from Kultepe over the last decade since I took uh, I took over as the director. The main scope of this presentation will be to draw a general scheme of the Central Anatolian cultures before the Assyrian trading colony period by looking at architectural patterns and findings and development revealed by the early Bronze Age strata at Kultepe Kanish, which I am now focusing attention. As you know, long-term excavations, which lasted 58 years by Tarsin Özgüç, illuminated not only the second millennium colony period, but also the early Bronze Age, the formative stages of this age to a lesser extent. The 18th level, uh, which was reached during the excavations by Tarsin Özgüç, is dated to the beginning of the early Bronze Age. Of course, due to the circumstances, it could only be reached in a very small area. And uh, handmade uh, monochrome ware with a red burnished surface is one of the distinct ceramic groups of this phase. Alongside the monochrome red burnished group, red on buff painted ware and fluted ware of copper age, Alishard can also be seen in this level. The limited extent of the excavations carried out to date, however, does not enable us to shed much light on the culture, particularly the architecture and settlement plan of this phase. Levels 17 to 14 were dated to early bronze age two by Tassin Özgüç. Although architectural remains in this level could only be investigated in a small area, below the early Bronze Age three monumental buildings, the small finds give us important clues. First, the headless alabaster idols from level 15 indicate the earliest ties were with southwestern Anatolia. On the other hand, other finds represent the earliest material traces of the relations with southern Anatolia and northern Syria as evidenced by among others, important Syrian battles. The aim of the excavations carried out in recent years is to understand the political, cultural, and economic situation of Anatolia, and especially Kultepe in the periods before uh, the Assyrian merchants came and the modalities on how and why this very complex system developed. Continuing excavations at Kultepe with its multidisciplinary approach, along with resolving some of the much debated problems has also provided a hitherto unforeseeable insight into the social economic system of the Near East. Besides the new discoveries certainly provided much new information on the religious system of tradition, tradition of Kultepe and Anatolia. Previously uh, at Kultepe, it is thought that the early Bronze Age settlement at Kultepe was limited only in the core of the mount since no study had been conducted on other parts of the site. Since there were monumental buildings in the West Trench still standing, it was not possible to descend to the early, early Bronze Age without removing them. For this reason, we preferred an area where we could go to the early strata where the settlement was not as dense and where more modest structures had been built. So we planned to go to the early stages of the early Bronze Age and even earlier periods, which Tars and Özgürt could not dig for various reasons. In 2015, we started a new excavation in the North Trench with my Japanese colleague, Professor Kontane. We started to uh, work at the uh, north of the Vashna Palace in an area which had been destroyed uh, by the villagers a century ago. And according to the C14 dates, we reached the beginning 
of early Bronze Age in 2016, which yielded interesting results. We were able to identify seven different building levels in the third phase of early Bronze Age, which is represented only in four levels in the Western Trench. The more building levels in that area can be explained by the fact that the simpler structures must have had a shorter lifespan than the monumental buildings. Not only the C14 datings, but the pottery comparisons also gave the same result. Eventually, this result is in accordance with the neighbors. Black burnished pottery, with, which was discovered in the temporary level 17 and dated about the beginning or the end of the third millennium and the beginning of the third millennium BC, is a good indicator for establishing relations with the neighboring sites as well. Large vases, large vases with black burnished exteriors and the brown slip inside are common in Aslan Tepe in Malatya, especially at the beginning of the third millennium as in Kultepe. According to the initial results, the EBA settlement extended to the northern end of the mound, leading to the realization that the size of early Bronze Age settlement was much wider than we thought before. Even a new trench at the west edge of the mound in 2020 showed that it extends more than we assumed. We reached there the layers dating to the 25th century BC, yet no trace of virgin soil. The occupation of such a large area before the colonial period is important to show how the size of the settlement was in the early Bronze Age. We don't know any other contemporary early Bronze Age settlement in Anatolia larger than Kultepe at present. Following the simple, uh, more simple plan units and relatively modest buildings of the early Bronze Age one and two, the monumental structures that emerged during the third and the last stage of the period reflect not only the architectural developments at Kultepe, but also hint at social change in central Anatolia more broadly. The plan of these buildings suggests that the source for source of inspiration for the monumental buildings constructed at Kultepe at the beginning of the second millennium BC was based on the political, economic, and cultural developments both within Anatolia and Kultepe during the early bronze period, as well as a result of international relations at that earlier period. Two weeks ago, my colleague, Goiko Baryamovic, presented a spectacular lecture in the series of webinars entitled Business from the Beginning, Long Distance Trade in Anatolia, uh, 2500 to 1500 BCE. We, the archaeologists, uh, are preparing a material floor of this title at Kultepe. So thank you, Vasa, for organizing my lecture right after Goiko's lecture. Even though the contacts were established with culturally developed societies in the south where, where writing was known, Anatolia had not yet developed or borrowed a writing system in the third millennium. So the earliest information about this region and period is the legendary king of battle, Shartamhari, text on the deeds of King Sargon of Akkad and his grandson Naramsin from the version in the Hittite language written 800 years after the death of Sargon. The king of battle made war on the city of Burushatun, maybe Ajemhur, maybe I say, because of the complaints of Akkadian merchants and in later years, Naramsin defeated the coalition of 17 kings. Among them were Pampa, the king of Hatti and Zipani, the king of Kanish. As, as you all know, during the final phase of early Bronze Age II, around the 25th century BC or 24, a new era began in Anatolia new and different developments in both settlement plan and daily life emerged. These developments must have been accelerated by the arrival of neighbors from the south who wanted to benefit from Anatolia's 
natural resources, as also presented by Baryomovic, Shahalu, and FL. A main reason for this acceleration of prosperity must have been the link formed by the southern neighbors for the purpose of exchanging the mineral resources of Anatolia. This led to a local development of new mining techniques and resulted in sharing raw material resources and products in a well-developed and systematic commercial network. One of the most important developments in the latter centuries of the early Bronze Age II and into the three is metallurgy and the subsequent search for important ore such as tin used as an alloy for bronze. Metal ore mining in the Taurus Mountains beginning as early as the early Bronze Age II may have been one of the main catalysts for the expansion of trade networks in the early Bronze Age III period. The jewelry found at Kultepe has wide geographic distributions from Ur in Mesopotamia, Troy in Western Anatolia, and Koliohne in the Aegean, perhaps as a mutual exchange of gifts between kings or elites or as a dowry. These luxury objects were made of silver and gold and were recently found in the early Bronze Age burials at Kürtepe, strongly attesting to the existence of interregional or international relations. In the last phase of the early Bronze Age, we also find new concepts emerging in architecture and deep changes, changes, changes in the plans of the buildings. At Kürtepe, at the mouth, three consecutive monumental buildings have been excavated in the West Trans built on top of each other and each destroyed in a violent fire. These buildings all represent the third phase of the early Bronze Age. The earliest uh, monumental structures uh, belongs to Stratum 13. According to the excavations undertaken in 2016, this was a huge complex measuring 70 meters east to west by 55 meters north to south. The complex is composed of at least two distinct structures. Judging from the part excavated so far, the building was developed in at least three phases. The excavation of this structure is not yet complete, but clearly it was built in an east-west direction. A row of rooms is discernible in this building, possibly the store rooms. All rooms are about 5.5 meters wide inside. However, the length of the rooms is not uniform. The eastern rows, eastern rooms are seven meters long on the inside, but their length increases moving west up to eight meters. The rooms have no inner access to each other and all are entered from the south. In front of the entrance, to each room, short walls with benches were built. This building complex, especially its dimensions, dimensions uh, showed that it clearly was not meant for domestic habitation. There are few clues about its function since its contents were removed prior to the fire that destroyed them. Its large dimensions have no parallel in Anatolia, and it was certainly an administrative building or its annex of storage units. Radiocarbon samples taken from the wooden beams belonging to the second phase of the building dated to the 25th or 24th century BC. That is the period when Anatolia began to have closer relations with its southern neighbors. It is apparent that this building had been destroyed by a strong fire. Fire ravaged the northern part of the building severely. Even being able to erect such monumental structures evidenced the presence of a powerful local authority having close commercial ties with her neighbors. As cited before, the name of Kanish Kingdom is mentioned in the so-called Shartamhari text as a powerful kingdom in central Anatolia. This building was built in the 25th century BC and must have been destroyed by the beginning of the 23rd century BC. 
above the level 13, uh, complex uh, two later monumental buildings had come to light during the excavations by Özgür, shown in red and beige in the slide. The earlier of these was a monumental building that he named as Megaron, dated to level 12. Its size is no smaller than its parallels at Beja Sultan and Troy. Regrettably, as Tarsin Özgür noted, the plan of the building was not entirely clear. Notably, its western part had been destroyed by a large silo uh, pit, uh, uh, silo pit and a refuse pit that reached down to the level 13. The excavated part of the building measured 20 by 22 meters. It is highly probable that it did not form an independent unit but that it was part of a larger complex as yet not fully excavated. Judging from what it is preserved, there were wide sitting benches, benches located in front of the walls on either side of the entrance of the building. The entranceway between the benches led to a great hall with a large hearth at its center. The four pillars surrounding the hearth supported the roof of this spacious room smaller chambers surrounded uh, this hall. At the side of this building, another struct structure was found built with adjoining walls. Since it is not fully excavated, its stratigraphic relationship to the so-called Megaron remains unknown. It was constructed with mud bricks set on stone foundations. The plaster on the walls was whitewashed. No similar plan is known from any other part of central Anatolia. The platform benches at the entrance and depots, the alabaster idols, and the clay figurines found in the structure here led Tassin Özgürç to interpret this building as a temple. This building, which is named as Megaron, was previously considered as a single building. However, new excavations have shown that this previously excavated structure is only part of a larger complex. Probably the part excavated at that time, as Özgür said, was the religious part of this complex. But the narrow rectangular rooms seen towards the west point to another function that we do not know exactly at present. On the one hand, it would be more appropriate to think that it is a religious and official structure, possibly on the east and on the west, a complex consisting of other rooms for storage. Unfortunately, we don't have a precise plan as the northwest corner was destroyed by the large trash pit, but it seems possible that a row of rooms may exist. Right here as in the north of the previously excavated building. We will try to solve this problem in the coming excavation seasons. After the destruction of this so-called Megaron building, another monumental structure was built on top of it. Due to the past pilasters and benches on the walls, it was named as Building with Pilasters by Tassin Özgürç. We started to excavate in the southwestern corner of the structure in 2015. Possibly an open air kitchen appeared immediately above some walls that are contemporary with the building with the so-called Megaron belonging to level 12. Some parts of the kitchen were damaged through, through erosion of strata in earlier excavations. Still the location of five places is quite evident in the preserved parts. The northern and western outer walls are discernible. Eight keyhole shaped fireplaces were identified in the excavated area. Pieces of wood that were pushed inside the fireplaces have survived to this day. This kitchen with numerous fireplaces was contemporary with the contemporary with the monumental pilaster building of level 11B and was most probably a service unit for it. The plan 
of this open air kitchen can be compared with the one discovered at the Abla Palace of the contemporary level. We continue to digging in this area next to the kitchen utilities in 2017, which you see in dark brown color in the slide. And uh, the whole area was destroyed during a strong fire, which can be seen for almost uh, two, for two meters in height. In the southwestern corner of the room or the hall, which is about five uh, by 10 meters in dimension. Uh, next to the gateway, we discovered a pitos, which was surrounded by a mud brick and earthen platform, which holds the pitos st stand still. In the northern face of the platform, there was a niche or a window in which you can reach to the bottom of the pitos. On the side of the pitos hall was open to, the, to take the grain from the container. We continue to excavate uh, the room next to the room uh, with the pitos to the east. During the excavations conducted in 2018 and 2020, approximately 100 gypsum idols and goddess statues were unearthed in a five by five meters square room in one of uh, these uh, monumental buildings. Since the room was heavily burned and destroyed, the conditions of the idols are not very promising. Burnt wooden beams and the mud bricks uh, had fallen down from the ceiling and walls and the fire turned the gypsum idols and figurines into chalk and destroyed the pottery, including a set of Kernoi. Uh, Kernoi in the room and vases with the idols stored in them. In spite of, the, of this terrible, let's say, condition, we were able to reveal almost 100 idols and figurines. This is, here, you, you, uh, these are some of the findings from that room. Actually, uh, we all know these uh, idols from the previous excavations at Kultepe, only at Kultepe. And uh, we have a figure sitting on the throne. Uh, we have uh, the idols in the, the whole body almost uh, in the uh, circular and uh, with one single or multiple heads, uh, which is known from all other uh, excavations done by Tassinus, which and by myself. You can also see here uh, the damage caused by the fire and the fallen beams. Most of them, as you can see here, turned into chalk. Just a few of them uh, fortunately escaped from the heavy fire, but broken broken during the collapse of the walls. The depictions on the sculptures, statues, and idols recovered in better condition, fortunately provided important information about hitherto unknown religious ritual of the early Bronze Age III period. An idol depicting a choir of six people sitting on their thrones over a bull procession is unique in Anatolia and in the Near East. The six people here, uh, the depicted here, they play music, they play flute. Here, maybe another close up. Similar idols have been found in the previous excavations, as I said before. I'm sure that the one uh, which Tassin, as you found, uh, had the same scene. But unfortunately, these were raised. Uh, so these idols, by means of their size and the representations carved on them, contribute to the representational art of the early Bronze Age Anatolia. Another uh, goddess statue, sitting uh, here, the, another one by Tassin Bay. Uh, another goddess statue sitting on an alabaster. 
uh, uh, sitting on, an, on a throne uh, is uh, about 45 centimeters in height and uh, up to date, it is the largest uh, one, the largest sculpture uh, in the early Bronze Age in Anatolia. And uh, according to the very recent uh, C14 analysis, the idols and the building where these idols have been discovered can be dated to the 23rd or 24th century BC, which makes the findings almost contemporary with the Akkadian period. At present, the excavations are still continuing. We haven't been able to reveal the full plan of this building yet. It is currently not possible to reach a conclusion as to whether the room in which the idols are located or found belongs to the shrine of a temple or a warehouse. I hope uh, the new excavations will give us more illuminating information about the rooms associated with this room. Aside from these buildings, during the reassessment of the early Bronze Age sequence on the high mount, a grave was chanced upon just uh, below the topsoil in 2010. The grave was located just to the southwest of Temple One of the Middle Bronze Age, but it was not associated with any architectural structure. As such, it cannot be based on stratigraphy, although the stylistic characteristics of the grave assemblage suggest that it may have belonged to the late third or early second millennium BC. The grave was a modest inhumation circled by stones, but it yielded an extraordinary rich uh, range of artifacts. The finds, which included bronze weapons, daggers, uh, spearhead, eggs, bronze vessels, a silver diadem, gold earrings, three hematite weights, and the cylinder seal clearly bespeak the high status of this individual. Another interesting detail about this middle age, uh, it, he is uh, almost 35 to 40 years old, male, is that he had undergone skull trepanation, which is perhaps related to the pathologies caused by an infectious disease he had. This individual is listed by B.K. Yuzajoli in her PhD thesis as person 44, whose strontium ratio clearly demonstrates a non-local origin. Meanwhile, the hematite weights found in the grain may signify that he was either a merchant or he had an office related to the administration of imported commodities. The funeral assemblage of this grave on Kutepa Mount, as well as the mode of burial is closely paralleled by grade 20 at Ashur and the strontium ratio is within the range of ratios known from Mesopotamia. Of artifacts buried as funerary offerings in grade 20, such as certain jewel items and source points have been noted to display stylistic similarities to late third millennium grave assemblages in Anatolia on the basis of which the individual in grade 20 at Ashur has been identified as a member of a family whose commercial or political interests were oriented towards Anatolia. Also worth to note in this regard is that that isotope analysis conducted by Yenar on a silver bracelet from grade 20 has demonstrated that this artifact was manufactured from South Central Anatolian ores located just south of Kultepe, such as uh, Taurus, numbered as 2A. Meanwhile, it is important to mention a new discovery concerning the burial customs at Kürtepe. In 2014, a cemetery uh, two kilometers southeast of Kürtepe was identified by an illegal excavation in a place known as Inardao Mevki 
by the smugglers, many pitos graves were excavated and of course plundered. Together with the Kayseri Museum, 67 pitos graves were excavated in three years period. The date of the cemetery to the early bronze age three is very clear by comparing times from Kürtepe. All of the ceramic, uh, ceramics and alabaster idols found are contemporary with the 12th layer of Kürtepe and this layer represents the intermediate culture in central Anatolia and is contemporary with the Akkadian imperial period in Mesopotamia such as 24th or 23rd century BC. Previously, excavation, uh, previous excavations on the, at the Mount of Kyotepe had already yielded information about early Bronze Age burial customs, both stone cysts and pitos graves, as well as simple inhumation graves had been recorded beneath the floors of the early Bronze Age buildings. However, no extramural cemetery had been discovered at the south of Kızılırmak yet till the discovery of this cemetery. So it was suggested this custom was not previously known in this area. Therefore, in Narda Cemetery confirms the presence of a burial tradition outside the settlement. From the illegal excavation pits and the pottery shards seen on the surface, the graveyard extends at least 100 meters along the ridge of Narda. Moreover, the cemetery is not limited to Narda, but about 500 west, the traces of illicit or illegal diggings and the pitos fragments thrown around shows or show that the cemetery has spread over a much wider area. So to sum up uh, the monumental buildings constructed uh, during the third phase of the early bronze age are different from the public buildings found in any other Anatolian centers, both with respect to their dimensions and their plan. However, the fact that such buildings have not yet been found does not mean that they did not ex exist. It would not be surprising to find parallels to these monumental buildings in future excavations in large centers such as Ajemehük, Alishar, and Kurche Yasuhük in central Anatolia. The rest, uh, for example, the recent excavations at Yasuhük revealed a monumental mud brick building with a courtyard about 25 by 20 meters and surrounding rooms contemporary with the buildings at Kyrtepe, especially the one uh, with the idols. On the other hand, exact parallels to these buildings are also unknown outside Anatolia, although they are more sim similar to examples from Syria or Mesopotamia. The Kyrtepe structures were built according to a set plan which differentiate them from the structures with eclectic layouts that were the characteristic up to this age. These earlier Anatolian buildings uh, were characteristically built to fit the topography of a small mound or develop organically and depending on utility. In contrast, the monumental buildings from the last phase of the early Bronze Age at Kültepe are more easily compared to the plans of the monumental buildings of the great mounds in northern Syria and Mesopotamia. They were erected on a more spacious ground and were composed of rooms and spaces with corners set at right angles. In addition, uh, the gypsum idols and figurines found in the areas associated with these buildings and in the Narda uh, Cemetery constitute one of the largest collections ever found in a building or in a, an excavation in Anatolia. Beyond the size and numbers, uh, a relief depic depiction of a ritual procession on, its, uh, on it is uh, unique and constitutes a feast or a religious ceremony. To conclude, uh, the plan of these buildings suggests that uh, the source of inspiration for the monumental buildings constructed at Kültepe dated to the beginning of the second millennium BC was 
based on cultural developments within Anatolia and Kürtepe during the early Bronze Age, as well as a result of international relations during that early period. The concept of constructing a building according to a preset plan, as is evident in the layout of the Middle Bronze Age Varshama Palace of level seven, would have been based on experience that the people of Kanish had accumulated through the construction of monumental buildings since the last half of the third millennium BC. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Kulakolo, for this really interesting uh, talk. Of course, Kültepe is uh, like a key site for Anatolian archaeology, both for the third millennium and for the second millennium. And I'm sure we are going to have lots of questions in the end. Uh, now, for uh, um, I would like to ask you uh, to give us a short five, six, seven minutes Turkish summary of your talk for our. Turkish students who are attending the talk as part of the concept of this lecture series and would like to ask our non-Turkish colleagues to stick by <laughs> uh, until the question and answer part. So please, if you can okay. also turn off your screen. The, Sorry? If you can also turn off your PowerPoint. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, uh, evet, uh, şimdi uh, bugünkü konferansımda uh, Kültepe'nin eski tutum uh, çağını anlatmaya çalıştım. Uh, burada ilk kazılar zamanında, yani Tahsin Özgüç zamanında 1948-2005 yılları arasında yapılan kazılarda tabii ağırlık olarak daha fazla asur ticaret kolonileri çağı tabakalarına uh, ağırlık bir, e, yönlendirilmişti ekipler. İlk kazılar sırasında sınırlı alanlarda eski tutum çağının erken tabakalarına inme fırsatı e, oldu. E, hocamızın kazabildiği en erken tabaka eski tutum çağı bir dediğimiz dönemin son evresine ait 18. tabakadır. Ve burada yapılan e, çalışmalar tabii ki çok sınırlı bir alanda gerçekleştirilebilmiş. Biz bunun daha erken tabakalarına inmek için... E, Kuzey açmada bir e, sondaj yaptık e, meslektaşım Kontani ile birlikte. Burada aslında e, henüz e, kazılar bitmedi ama maalesef e, su e, seviyesi yükseldiği için kazıları burada durdurmak zorunda kaldık. Çünkü çok küçük bir alandaydı ve neredeyse bir e, kuyu görüntüsü veriyordu. Aslında eski tutum çağı üçün bile e, yedi, önceden dört tabakayla belirtilen dört tabakanın yerine ekstra üç tabaka daha ilave etmek mümkün oldu. Çünkü bunlar e, buradaki yapılar e, çok anıtsal yapılar değildi ve dolayısıyla da daha e, hassas bir şekilde e, ve daha ince çalışarak tabii ki buradaki bu farklı tabakalaşmayı tespit etme imkanı bulduk. Ama e, bu o, alanda kazılarımız e, bitmedi fakat daha geniş farklı bir alanda bu çalışmaları sürdürmek için e, aslında kazılara da başladık. E, Kürtepe'nin e, ve hatta Anadolu'nun da diyebiliriz belki erken e, il, uluslararası ilişkilerine ilişkin veriler Kürtepe'nin e, eski tunçağı iki tabakalarından gelmekte ve özellikle Güneybatı Anadolu ile Suriye ve Kilikya bölgesine onu söylemeyi unuttum. Kilikya bölgesiyle ilişkilerin yoğun olduğunu biliyoruz. Bu gösterdiğim başsız idoller ve yine Suriye'den gelmiş olan Suriye şişeleri bu ilişkinin en kesin örneği. Yine aynı şekilde eski Tunç 2'nin sonlarına tarihlenen Darboğaz Seremi dediğimiz Anatolian, Anadolu Metalik Veyri diye de adlandırabileceğimiz bir seramik türü Kültepe'de de bulunmakta ve bu anlamda Kültepe'nin çevre kültürlerle ilişkisini göstermesi açısından önemli. En önemli gelişme aslında bütün Anadolu'da karşımıza çıkan gelişme eski tüm çağı 3'te başlıyor. Yaklaşık olarak 3. bin yılın tam ortalarında ortalarını baz alırsak bu dönemden itibaren Anadolu'da bir hareket gözleniyor ve o özellikle de uluslararası, bölgeler arası ticaretin yoğunluğunu görüyoruz. Yani bunları gördüğümüz malzemeler de bizim 
özellikle e, bir bölgeye ithal edilmiş yabancı seramikten ki bu ta Ege'den başlayarak e, Doğu Anadolu'ya kadar giden bölgede bulunan bu seramikler bize uluslararası ilişkileri göstermekte. Ve özellikle de Kürtepe'nin e, bu döneminde e, yani eski Tuncu'nun üçüncü safhasında e, yeni mimaride yeni bir takım gelenekler ortaya çıkmaya başlıyor. E, aslında gelenekten ziyade ihtiyaca binaen yapılmış olan bir e, yapılaşmadan söz edebiliriz. Şöyle ki... E, e, tabii Kültepe büyük bir e, höyük ve bu e, höyün üzerinde e, daha geniş düzlükler e, söz konusu ve burada e, tepenin üzerinde eski Tunç 3'e tarihlenen 3 ayrı tabaka halinde tarihlendirilmiş 3 tane büyük yapı var. Bunlardan bir tanesi bu 13. tabakaya en erkeğine 13. tabakaya tarihlendirilen ve sadece bir çeyreği kazılabilmiş olan bir yapı. Yapının bir parçası muhtemelen de depo kısmını e, oluşturan, e, odalardan oluşan kısmını biz kazdık ve bu aslında hem e, karbon hem de diğer tarihlendirmelerle yaklaşık olarak 25. 24. yüzyıla tarihlendirilebiliyor ki bu da aşağı yukarı e, bizim Akat, Akatların Anadolu'ya gelmesinden önceki dönemi e, göstermekte. Fakat e, bu yapının e, Büyük bir yangınla yıkılması da aşağı yukarı akatlarla çağdaş. Dolayısıyla e, bizim e, o dönem için e, yazılı metinlerden daha doğrusu daha sonraki dönemden yazılı metinlerle bildiğimiz akatların Anadolu'ya gelişi hikayesiyle de belki bağlamak mümkün olabilecek bir olaydan bahsediyorum. E, belki de akatların bu bölgeye kadar geldiğinde tarif ettiği yerlerden birisi olma ihtimali de çok yüksek. E, bu binanın hemen üzerinde daha önce Tahsin Hocamız zamanında yapılmış olan kazılarda çıkarılmış iki tane daha büyük yapı var. Bunlardan bir tanesi Megaron dediğimiz bir bina. Tahsin Hocamızın Megaron adını taktığı bir bina. Aslında bu e, bina e, daha önceden e, ön tarafı, batı tarafı büyük bir çukurla tarif edildiği için tam olarak planı bilinmiyordu. Yapının buralarda sona ermiş olduğu anlaş- görülmekteydi ve yapının mevcut haliyle de bir e, Megaron'u andırdığını ve bu yüzden de Sokot Megaron diye e, isimlendirdiği bir yapı. Bunun e, büyük bir salonu var. Büyük bir salonun içinde girişte e, yine bir ocak e, bizi karşılıyor. Ve kuzey tarafında ve güney tarafında sonradan eklenmiş odalar var. Bu son yıllarda yaptığımız kazılarda bu binanın e, batısını da kazmaya başladık. Ve bu binanın batıya doğru uzandığını gördük ve aslına bakarsanız henüz bu da bitmiş değil ama en azından bu megaron olan kısmı büyük ihtimalle mevcut e, bu kompleksin bir parçası dini bir parçası ya da idari bir parçası olarak e, düşünülebilir. Diğer tarafları da e, depo odaları olması muhtemel ince uzun dikdörtgen planlı yapılar e, şeklinde. Bunun üstünde yani e, Tahsin Hocamızın kazdığı e, alanda bu Megaron'un üzerinde bir başka yapı daha vardı. Plastrolu yapı diye adlandırmıştı. 11B tabakasına verilen bir e, yapı. Bu da muhakkak ki bir e, resmi ya da dini özel bir yapı olması lazım. Herhangi bir şekilde bunların e, bir e, özel ev olmadığını zaten anlayabiliyoruz boyutları açısından. Bir biz bu binanın e, güney batısında e, kazmaya e, devam ediyoruz hali hazırda ve burada bir mutfak kompleksi açığa çıkartıldı ama maalesef tamamı elimizde değil. Daha önceki e, kazılar sonrası bırakılan açık bırakılan alanda tarif edilmiş olduğunu gördük erozyon nedeniyle. E, ve bunun da hemen güneyinde bir büyük oda içinde, büyük bir salon içinde aslında 5'e 10 metre ölçülerinde bir salon içinde bir e, in situ kito, e, küp e, bulundu ve ama bu alan neredeyse e, özellikle e, doğu kısmı 2 metre yüksekliğinde bir tarif tabakasıyla e, dolu e, yıkıntıyla dolu ve bunun hemen e, bu yıkıntının hemen altında biz 2018 ve 2020 yıllarında yaptığımız kazılarda burada yaklaşık 100 adet alabastır ya da cipsum idol e, bulduk. Maalesef yangın tabii ki çok fazla miktarda e, ısı ürettiği için e, hem bu e, yıkıntıların düşmesi sonrasında hem de e, ağaçların, kerpiçlerin e, 
bu idollerin üzerine düşmesiyle maalesef çoğu tebeşire dönmüş vaziyette ama yüz, yüze yakın, tam yüz değil, yüze yakın e, idol ve heykelciyi biz buralarda bulduk ve hatta bunlar içinde bir tanesinin e, 45 santimetre boyutuyla Ön Asya'da, şey, Anadolu'da eski tüm çağına tarihlendirilen en yüksek, en uzun heykel olarak ve heykel olarak artık nitelendirebileceğimiz bir e, parça idi. Ayrıca Yine e, konservasyon, Ankara'da konservasyonu yapılan eserlerin bir kısmının üzerinde e, korunabildiği kadarıyla bazı sahnelerde yer almakta. Şöyle ki Anadolu'da bizim bilmediğimiz e, tasvirli sanat eserleri arasına koyabileceğimiz bir e, sahne e, bir idol üzerinde bulundu. E, aslında şunu da söylemem lazım. E, Anadolu'da eski tüm çağında bu tür e, tasvirli sanat eseri yok e, ve bu anlamda da bu günlük ama diğer taraftan da e, bu şeyler idollerin e, daha önce bulunmuş olan örnekleri maksimum çapı 20 santim iken bir tanesi hatta birkaç tanesi muhtemelen parçalanmış olanlar da dahil olmak üzere çapları 45-50 santime ulaşacak kadar çok büyük bir e, idol grubunu bulmuş olduk. E, tabii bu idollerin burada e, ne için bulunduğunu henüz şu anlamda şu e, zamanda söylememiz biraz kolay değil ama e, vazoların içinde bile e, depolanmış olduğuna göre muhtemelen saklanmak üzere oraya bırakılmış. Fakat e, yandaki odalardan sonra ancak e, biz tam olarak bu odanın fonksiyonunu anlayabileceğiz. Ya bir e, tapınak, e, tapınakta kutsal oda ya da başka bir şekilde bir depo odası olup olmadığını ancak o zaman söyleyebileceğiz. Bunun yanında yine yapılan e, kazılarda ilginç olanlarından sadece bahsettim tabii ki. E, 2010 yılında kazılan bir mezar ilginç bir buluntu vermişti ve buluntuları özellikle de halen de üzerinde tartışmaların sürdüğü Ağustur'daki 20 numaralı mezarda bulunanlara benzeyen birçok e, eser e, verdi bize ve bu, bu aynı zamanda da bizim yine bu e, tartışmalara bir anlamda ışık tutabileceğimizi de göstermekte ve tabii ölü göm madetler açısından önemli olduğunu da söyleyebiliriz ve bu e, yapılan strontium element analizlerinden de bu e, kişinin yabancı olduğunu Mesopotamyalı olmuş olabileceğini e, söylememiz mümkün. Bir de yine son yıllarda 2014-2016 yılları arasında Kültepe'nin 2 kilometre kadar güneydoğusundaki bir alanda bir mezarlık kazısı yaptık. Burada da yine o zamana kadar bölgede bilinmeyen eski tüm çağ mezarlığının var olduğunu görmüş olduk. Ve özellikle de bu mezarda bulunan eserler açısından da az önce örneklerini verdiğim idol ...lerle çağdaş bir zaman dilimine ait olduğunu söyleyebiliyoruz ve bütün bunlarla beraber bizim aslında bu dönemdeki kazılarımız bundan sonraki dönemde başlayacak olan Asur Ticaret Kurumları çağının bir öncüsü olduğunu yani bütün bu örnekler aslına bakarsanız daha sonraki çağı etkilemiş vaziyette ve hatta bu özellikle dik açılı önceden planlanmış yapı yapma geleneğinin bu çağdan başladığını ve bunun en iyi örneğini koloni çağında Varşama Sarayı'nda gördüğümüzü vurgulamış oldum. Ee, sabrınız için teşekkür ederim ve sorularınızı da almaya hazırım tabii ki.